Hello friends and thank you for joining me. Today we are going to chat briefly about honeybees versus native bees. But, woo, before we do that, let's, let's make sure that we can tell the difference between a bee and one of its allies that might look similar, but is an entirely different group of insects. If you guessed this is not a bee, you are correct. This is a wasp. One of the ways you can tell a wasp or its ally from honeybees is it has no pollen carrying structures, no fuzz on its body, no places to pack pollen on its abdomen or its legs. The other thing that's different is the waist. The junction between the thorax and the abdomen is super tiny. In honeybees, it's much wider. Take a good look. This will help you out when you're outside and checking out for bees versus their allies. Next, we have a honeybee. Check out the pollen carrying structures. It's got a wide tibia on that back leg. It's also fuzzy and all of this helps it both pollinate plants and also carry pollen back to the nest. Other structures this critter has that you can't see, it has a honey crop allowing it to gather nectar from flowers and fly that back into the nest where the rest of the colony will help make it into honey. Next, let's go visit the honeybees in their house. Yes, we're gonna go visit a beehive and learn about this really unique structure. Honeybees are unique in that they live in a huge colony. We're talking maybe 50,000 bees at the peak of the summer. Don't be alarmed, this is a hive that I'm taking apart just to do a spring hive check and they're doing well, which is a great sign. But this stack of boxes, this is called a Langstroth hive, and this is the typical structure that's used in North America for honeybee keeping. If we take apart our hive, we have a box, and inside the box are frames, and the frames are where bees build their honeycomb. Now, Honeybees build tons of honeycomb and a beekeeper takes advantage of this work ethic. Uh, after the honeycomb is filled, the queen will lay an egg in it and a baby bee will develop. That baby bee eventually becomes a worker and as long as the bees have space, they will fill this space with honey, which is why beekeepers keep bees. In addition to honey, bees will help pollinate certain crops. Occasionally, you need a large number of bees to pollinate a large number of flowering plants. Perhaps an orchard, like almonds or apples. These are all crops that tend to be helped out significantly by having honeybees around. Honeybees have very specific flight conditions. They need it to be 55 degrees, preferably in the 60s, and nice and sunny, usually. That isn't always the case when a plant needs to be pollinated. In the case of my service berry, it was in a holding pattern for two weeks and then burst into full flower two and a half days ago. And by this point, the petals are already dropping. Now, the honeybees didn't even have time to find it. However, I'm pretty confident it's received lots of visitors because I had native bees all over my backyard. Next, let's take a look at native bees. Folks, this is just a tiny sample of over 120 bees within Minnesota, over 4,000 throughout North America. The cool thing with native bees is there's a bee for every plant and vice versa. They're specialists. They also are adapted to handle our climate. That means in that little window that I had for my service berry to bloom, I had plenty of native bees around to take care of the job. a few of our early season native bees. This one I bet you recognize. Is your guess bumblebee? If so, you're correct. This is a common eastern bumblebee. There are many species of bumblebees. This one is visiting a plant called Liatris or blazing star that appears in midsummer, but bumblebee queens are just starting to emerge at this point in the springtime. Here is another early season bee. This one is a digger bee. Both digger and mining bees have underground nest tunnels and they emerge from them early in the spring, often looking for the very first flowers that we have along the forest floor or out in the prairies.
This next early season bee is called the Blue Orchard Mason Bee, and it was the one responsible for visiting my service berry and helping it get pollinated. This one is visiting Pachysandra, and these again are some of our early season bees. Sometimes in bees we'll see just one generation, or perhaps we might see a second generation by late in the summer. As you're going about your spring and summer, don't forget to take a look for all of these different native bees. I hope you enjoyed this very brief intro to both honeybees and native bees. If you've got questions, send them our way, we love to hear from you. Hope you have a great day and thanks for watching.